It is the News Blitz with Randy Wang on Talk Radio 790 KABC. We're here every single day from 5 to 6 talking about the local issues that matter to you most and taking your phone calls at 800-222-KABC, 1-800-222-5222. Take your emails as well at randykabc at gmail.com. That's randykabc at gmail.com. I'm going to just put this out there. I don't expect anything from it, but Gavin Newsom, Governor of California, if you happen to still be in the San Fernando Valley after cleaning up that homeless encampment, I implore you to call in and make your case while you're going after the L.A. County Board of Supervisors for not cleaning up the homeless encampments. You can either call in at 800-222-KABC, 1-800-222-5222, or come a little across the valley. I'm real close to Van Nuys Airport, and I'll bring you in the studio. Yeah, Gavin Newsom has been cleaning up a homeless encampment in the Valley all day, and he got a gaggle of local reporters out there to trash the L.A. County Board of Supervisors for not doing their jobs. And I got sound. Let's get right into it. But yes, Gavin, if you're around, call in. Make your case. Well, thanks, guys, for coming out. And uh, thank everybody that's behind me, around me, everybody that's been out all day. Working, cleaning up encampments all over L.A. County. How mad does he have to be? Kamala Harris has a VP. She's going up and down doing these huge rallies, and Gavin is in Mission Hills cleaning up trash. Uh, Since January of this year, over 1,400 encampments have been removed year to date uh, by the state. We recognize we have a significant role to play in cleaning up the encampments as well. That said, uh, we have thousands and thousands of additional encampments that have not been attended to all throughout the region, not just here in Los Angeles County, but in every part of the state of California. The state has provided unprecedented resources. Here we go. Daddy Gavin gave you so much money. What did you do with it? Uh, Since January of this year in Los Angeles County, the state has provided unprecedented resources uh, for cities, municipalities, large and small, to address the encampment crisis. In fact, we created an encampment resolution grant specifically targeted to encampments. This in addition to the billions of dollars we provided for homelessness more broadly, we put a specific grant together uh, that addresses the underlying issues. That's exactly the opposite of criminalization. It's called a resolution grant because it's a requirement before you draw down the money that you resolve to address the issue and the needs for services for those inside the encampment. Well, you've been giving out those grants left and right, but the number in the county didn't go down. What's going on, Gavin? The money then is distributed after we have an application filled out that says that you are going to contact people, support people, get them back on their feet. $144 million has been provided through the encampment resolution grants in L.A. broadly, not just L.A. City, but L.A. County and the COCs. Where did that money go? Because I'll tell you, situation doesn't look that much different than it did before you were giving the county any state money. This, in addition to roughly $3.1 billion of other resources, all told $3.2 billion just in the last few years coming from the state of California to address the issues of mental health, substance abuse, housing, short-term housing, long-term workforce development, uh, and subsidizing direct rents and supports. I'm he- and the problem is just as bad. I'm here, as I often am. Many of you have been with me doing these kinds of cleanups for many, many years. I'm here uh, on behalf of 40 million Californians that are fed up. Usually he gets a mayor and makes them do it with him when he wants to punish them. He did it at Garcetti. He's done it to Shangi. Can't do it to Karen Bass because Karen Bass is in Paris. I'm here uh, because I'm one of them. Uh, I want to see results. I don't want to read about them. I don't want to see the data. I want to see it by believing it. He's fed up, I tell you. By seeing people that are back up on their feet and to get those streets uh, clean, get those tents off the streets, the encampments off the streets, uh, and begin once again to feel pride about our state. And so that's why I'm here. Final point. I didn't. Anytime Gavin says final point, it's not the final point. There's still two and a half minutes left just in his opening before he goes to questions. Final point. I did an executive order with intention. Um, 
This is the executive order he put into motion after Grant's pass was decided by the Supreme Court that said, counties, do your damn job and clean up the encampments. And certain counties, like San Francisco, have been like, absolutely we will. And London Breed's doing everything she can, start with bus tickets to get these people out of there. Now, people keep coming back after they clean up the encampments, but you got to start somewhere. L.A. County straight up rejected it, saying we're not doing that. Um, We have cleaned up every hurdle for addressing this issue. I've been doing this so long, I've heard every conceivable excuse. In fact, the rhetoric around the excuses go back to the 70s and the 80s and the 90s. I keep hearing... Well, back then we called them hobos. I keep hearing from folks the exact same language they used in the 70s and 80s and 90s a decade ago, despite the fact that we have cleared the way with conservatorship reform, which they've all been asking for, with a new paradigm for engagement called Care Court, which they asked for, with mental health housing, supports for workforce supports, next year, unprecedented redirection, ongoing billion dollars a year, July of next year, for housing and rental subsidies, $6.38 billion bond that was just passed by the voters, uh, money going out the door uh, soon. He's made every reform possible. He's got so much money. Why isn't the problem getting better? We're done with the excuses. And the last big excuse was, well, the courts are saying we can't do anything. Well, that's no longer the case. So we had a simple executive order. Do your job. There's no more excuses. You got the money. You got the flexibility. If you're wondering who he's saying. Do your job. To, it's the Board of Supervisors. It's specifically the L.A. County Board of Supervisors that have had meeting after meeting in the last couple of weeks where... Quite frankly. And... Quite frankly. And... Quite frankly. And... Quite frankly. And... I love the bus driver. Say, we don't want to do that. Even Barger. Do your job. There's no more excuses. You got the money. You got the flexibility. You got the green light. You got the support from the state. And the public is demanding it of you. And if this is not the most important issue, you're not paying attention. This is the biggest scar in the reputation of the state of California. Don't make Gavin look bad. It's an election year. This is it. If we can prove we can actually deal with this, they'll start believing we can solve a lot of other problems in this state. Yes, you're 100% right about that, Gavin. If you can show us noticeable improvement, you will have a lot of faith in the things that you can do for the state of California. And if you ever do decide to run for president, you have a track record to run on. Can't do that the way the state looks now. And so that's my state of mind. State of California's doing more than ever. We'll continue to do more. Yes, but doing more than ever is writing blank checks and not asking for how the money is being spent. You actually have no accountability, to use one of your favorite words, of how the money is being spent. And when the legislature passed a bipartisan bill to say that we need audits for how this money is being spent, Gavin Newsom vetoed it, saying it would waste too much time to find out how we're spending this money. We'll continue to... Someone's getting rich off of this. We'll continue to do more, but this will be my final words on this. We've spent $25 billion in just the last five years on this problem. There's about 200,000 people in the state. We could have written every single one of them a check for about 125 Gs. But they didn't get that money. We'll continue to do more, but this will be my final words on this. If we don't see demonstrable... See, he always... He never says final words once. It's always twice or thrice. Final words on this. If we don't see demonstrable results, I'll start to redirect money. I'm not okay, now here is the, the meat of the presser. Gavin is going to start withholding money. He's going to ground L.A. County. He's going to punish us if Janice and Catherine and Hilda and Holly and Lindsay don't want to do their job, then he's going to take away all the money. Gavin's going to go make it rain in Ventura. Gavin's going to go make it rain in San Diego. Gavin's going to make it rain a lot in Orange County, San Berdu and Riverside. Maybe even Imperial County for the five people that live there. But Gavin is going to turn off the fire hose of state money to doesn't want to do their job, Los Angeles County. And you know what? Good for him. If we don't see demonstrable results, I'll start to redirect money. I'm not interested in status quo ante any longer. Uh When you have local electeds who have the budgets that they have in the state of California, money is everything. Money is the power. And Threatening to take away the money if he actually follows through with it is a huge deal, if it happens. Uh, 
and that will start in January with the January budget. We've been providing the support. Local government embraces those efforts, focuses a sense of urgency. We're going to double down. London Breed's going to get so much money. If local government's not interested, we're fine. We'll redirect the money to parts of the state, cities and counties that are. This bu- and the word's going to get out that L.A. County is the one place that is not going to enforce these laws. Guess where everyone's coming? Everyone in San Francisco that doesn't want the help, they're going to come down here because they'll get left alone. This, by the way, long-windedly, is not an indictment of L.A. City. In fact, I want to applaud Mayor Bass. Okay, see? This isn't about Karen Bass, according to him. He knows not to mess with her. She's locking arms. This is about L.A. County Board of Supervisors, which he knows personally, many of them. She saw a 10.4% reduction in unsheltered homeless last, last year. Which was one of- yes, but the number in the county only went down by 200 people. So they didn't house 10% of the homeless population. They just moved out of city limits. Which was one of the most significant declines in the state of California. She's been a good partner. I'll be candid with you. This is more broadly an indictment of counties. And as a former county mayor, I intimately appreciate the role of counties as it relates to the service components of this. Counties need to do more. And so we're here with our hands out, open hand, not a closed fist. That said, he does sound like he wants to punch a wall. If we don't see results, we're going to change our approach completely. First question he got asked by the press, and I can't play you what the questions were because, of course, this is a press conference in 2024. Nobody is mic'd, and there's a lot of street noise because he's under an overpass in Mission Hills. But the first question was about, so you're going to actually take away money that's supposed to go to the county if they don't do what you want? Well, we just said the state doesn't have to continue to provide unprecedented money to address all their concerns. It's funny because this is what the audit was going to do. The one that Gavin vetoed was show where the inefficiencies are, where the money is straight up getting flushed down the toilet. They said they wanted reforms on conservatorships. They have it, but they're not even implementing conservatorship programs. in L- What the hell, Janice? In L.A. County. They can't even set it up for one person. Say we don't have the money, the resources. How is that possible? We provided $990 million just through the HAP program for L.A. See, Gavin Newsom is all about large proclamations, headlining, gra- headline grabbing moments, and light on the details. And sometimes for things like care court, for things like conservatorships, the way the legislation is written is the counties are going to have to figure out how to start up a system, how to bring up a system for care court. The counties have to figure out how to create their own mental health court and do all this stuff. So Gavin is, he's not directly creating a lot of these things. He's pushing it to the counties. And then when counties don't do exactly what he wants, because he's not being clear with them what exactly he wants. Well, this is what happens. We provided $990 million just through the HAP program for L.A. City and L.A. County and the COC. Every time you hear him say HAP, that's money the county can spend however they want. And usually they spend it on things like Dr. Barbara Ferrer's meth pipe program. For LA- and excuse me, I didn't mean to call her doctor. That was a slip. For L.A. City and L.A. County and the COC in the last couple of years. They say, well, we don't have money for short-term housing for people with mental health. How can that be? We provided almost $400 million specifically for that. Because the money that's supposed to go towards substance use, the money that's supposed to go towards mental health is going towards meth pipes. I wish, I wish I could have been at that presser because there were a few good questions asked, but nobody ever asked that specific question. Why is that the money that we're wasting? We provided almost $400 million specifically for that. Well, we don't have long-term infrastructure dollars. How can that be when we provide an unprecedented supports? The rhetoric is increasingly stale. This is not about... How many service providers are we giving massive government contracts to where the only service they provide is they give somebody a water bottle once a week and check in, how you doing? Because that's what's happening. The rhetoric is increasing... That's why you hear the term services. Services can mean a whole lot of things, including here's a water bottle. The rhetoric is increasingly stale. This is not about criminalization. What's criminal is neglecting people that are struggling and suffering and dying on our watch. That's criminal. Okay, so who can we indict for their criminal negligence? You? Holly? Hilda? Somebody? Garcetti? Extradite him all the way from India? What's criminal is people don't have restrooms. What's criminals people literally... Well, where's your porta potty program, Gavin? What's criminals people literally are putting their lives at risk every single night. People are found dead, stabbed to death. 
people are found shot. Well, can't we criminalize those people, the ones that are doing the stabbing and the shooting? No, we can't criminalize any of them. You know, it's fascinating. There are a lot of encampment sweeps that are going on in San Francisco right now. And you know what they're finding? They're finding a lot of people with warrants. They're finding a lot of people that commit burglary after burglary after burglary after burglary. Yeah, there's some people down on their luck. There's some people that are mentally ill. There are some people that are just addicted and wasting away. But these encampments also house a lot of criminals. Can't we criminalize them? I mean, this is serious. There's no compassion in allowing these conditions to persist. And had I not put up all this money to address the underlying issue, to address the service issue, I wouldn't have said any of that. Yeah, but it's not a money problem. I think we have come to the conclusion it's never been a money problem. It's a political will problem. We have spent more money than ever on this problem, and it continues to get worse or stays the same. I would have said what they're saying. So with respect, this is not about Bass. This is not about the back and forth. Please don't make that. I I appreciate there'll be a tendency to do that. Well, you did just call out the Board of Supervisors. But you guys all, I look around. Even though Karen Bass has actually been the loudest opponent of what Gavin wants to do. He just can't yell at her because she's in sweet Paris. But you guys all, I look around. You've been here with me before, before this executive order on multiple, multiple occasions. And so this is not, this is not one of those political, political things. This is a sincerely held belief that we need local government to step up. This is a crisis. Act like it. And I am dealing with crisis. Didn't we take a, declare a state of emergency? Oh, that's right. That meant nothing. And I am dealing with crisis after crisis. Wildfires in Northern California. There's 6,500 people right now on the park fire. I want to see that kind of urgency on the issue of encampments. It's not complicated. Maybe you got to declare a state of emergency, except you can't. I'm not looking at L.A. County. Any county that wants to partner with us and step up with a sense of urgency that can demonstrably produce results, we're going to double down on our support. Any county that's not interested in that and is holding on to stale talking points from the 80s and 90s, we're not interested in continuing the funding. That's, again, cities can do their part. You can apply for federal grants, but the state's unprecedented, billions and billions of dollars support. I'm not interested in providing that support and not seeing the results. I'm a taxpayer, not just the governor. It's not complicated. We'll send that money to counties that are producing results. Gavin Newsom is mad as hell, and he's going to cut off L.A. County's money because they're not doing a damn thing about the homeless. There's a lot more of this presser that just happened a couple hours ago. It actually broke while I was driving home, and Gavin wanted to make sure people saw it, so he put the gaggle of reporters at the underpass in Mission Hills. He put it on his YouTube channel. That's how I found out about it. We get a lot more questions about Gavin, including criminalization, grants, even what he got called by the former president today. Stick around. We got a lot of pissed off Gavin. It's the News Blitz with Randy Wang on KABC. It's the News Blitz with Randy Wang on KABC. Gavin Newsom is in Southern California right now. He was just clearing out a homeless encampment in Mission Hills, and he called all the local press down there to scream at L.A. County Board of Supervisors for not doing their jobs. We're going to get back to all this sound, but first let's go to Mike in Long Beach. Mike, hello. Hello. Hey. Hey, Randy, how's it going? You know, I was in Norwalk the other day, and I saw this Metropolitan State Hospital. This thing goes at least a mile long, probably a half mile wide. There are tons of housing units that are old, decrepit, run down, and empty. There is a ton of land for development there. The only function of that place is their lockup, probably for the extreme insane. Gavin, if you're so pissed off, why don't you put some of that money into facilities like that? And how many more across the state are there that nobody knows about? There are tons. There's plenty. There's the one that the owner of the LA Times is holding on to for no reason. And the thing is, Gavin is given all this money that the counties can spend on it, whatever they want, and we require no accountability. We know it's being wasted. How much? You're right. How much of that money could have gone to that one specific hospital, turned that into a massive facility, but they don't want to do that. They don't want large facilities. They think that's the wrong way to go. They would. They don't want any mental health facility, facility long. long Larger than 16 beds. They think otherwise it takes us back to the 60s. It's already built. Why not use it? 
I think you make a great point, Mike. Thanks so much for the call. Appreciate it. We'll get back to Gavin all pissed off in the valley. Coming up next, it's the News Blitz with Randy Wang on KABC. It is the News Blitz with Randy Wang on Talk Radio 790 KABC. We're here every single day from 5 to 6 talking about the local issues that matter to you most and taking your phone calls at 800-222-KABC, 1-800-222-5222. Reading your emails as well at randykabc at gmail.com. That's Randy. KABC at gmail.com. Gavin Newsom spent the afternoon cleaning up a homeless encampment in the San Fernando Valley, in the Mission Hills area. He went off on LA County, not Karen Bass for some reason, but he went off on the LA County Board of Supervisors for not doing their job. And if he says they won't clean up the homeless encampments, he's going to turn off the fire hose of money. He's going to take away a whole bunch of money that he gives the county to spend at their leisure on this problem. Before we get back to Gavin complaining, let's go to Gabe and Rosemead. Gabe, hello. Hello. How are you doing? Uh, good to hear from doing you, uh, Randy. Uh, I'm just. My comment is that why is it Karen Bass always away when Gavin Newsom addresses this problem when when he signed the bill and you know today when he's out there in the valley cleaning up the homeless encampments. I feel like that's by design because he does not want to get into a confrontation with her specifically on this. Yeah, but both uh, who, who, who's the one coordinating it? Is it her or him? Well, he is specifically saying that the things he's got a problem with are the county. But as we know, the homeless problem is a county problem and a city problem. And there's massive inaction on both sides. It's strange that he only wants to go after one part of this. But for some reason, Gavin does not want to get into a fight with Karen Bass. That's what I have seen. Gavin is scared of getting into a confrontation with Karen Bass. He thinks that will make him look bad because she has a national profile. Well. We'll see what happens, but uh, I hope for the best, and uh, let's, let's, let's progress and get get this thing going uh, you know, as smoothly as possible, and that's all I hope for. That's all we can all hope for. Gabe, thanks so much for the call. Appreciate it. Hey, seriously, we all want the same thing. We want these people off the streets. We'd love it to be done in a humane way, but get them off the streets because leaving there – Leaving leaving him there is not humane. Gavin was asked by one reporter, I think it was Pete Demetrio of KNX, which I always find interesting because they ask really good questions and then you never hear them on their actual news reports. But where is all the housing supposed to be that you want all these people to go to? That's what I did with room key and home key. And I no, no, I got the receipts on that. I could show you 15,000 plus new permanent housing units under the home key model just at the state level alone. But that said... Yeah, but what's the turnover rate? How many of those people are getting their lives turned around, getting back on their feet and getting out? Not a whole lot. The turnover is really low. What you just So we just have to keep buying and buying and building and building. What you just described? Because we don't want to, you know, deal with the underlying problem. What you just described was the expression of my same frustration in the executive order. I'm with you. We did accountability plans for the first time two years ago. You may recall I rejected the first plans that came back because they weren't ambitious enough we've had but you didn't have any actual accountability like how the money was spent don't know we don't know how the money was spent last year we don't know how the money was spent the year before that there was a bill that got passed bipartisanly in the legislature that would make an accounting for how this money is spent gavin doesn't want to do that we've had one year to see the results i'm not satisfied and now with the executive order with grants passed now being removed and all the other support and Prop 1 now going into effect with all the zoning reforms that are component parts of Proposition 1 and all the redirection of ongoing money, you're absolutely right. If we don't see specific results in the next few months in a sense of urgency, we will redirect the funds to parts of the state that can prove to the great results. I want to see encampments off the streets. He wants encampments off the streets or they're not getting any more money. Let's go to Lee in El Monte. Lee, hello. Hi. I wanted to just say there are so many malls that are vacant now in Southern California, and there's also vacant military bases that are vacant. Why can't they use that land? Well, I I think that that makes a whole lot of sense. Well, I think that makes a whole lot of sense. For some reason, 
there is some issue with local electeds and even people like Gavin where they don't want to seem like they're centralizing the problem. They don't want to send everyone to one specific place. They want every part of a neighborhood to suffer equally. I don't know why. Maybe well, that's equity. I think the people the people need to stand up together and say um, that there's plenty of this, this vacant land and buildings and locations, they can they can get people off their feet there to give them a new start, get them out of the city, away from the drugs, and or if they're they have mental issues, make it mental facilities so they can get a fresh start away from this this wicked evil city that's full of drugs. Well, and specifically the mental issue, I mean, Gavin, I don't know how accurate he's being, but Gavin's like, hey, we changed the laws on conservatorships. We changed the, we brought in the care court and he's saying the county hasn't implemented any of that. So even if we have the ability now to institutionalize people, the county doesn't want to. Well, the people need to stand up and vote them out of office. They're incompetent. You are, They've ruined you are the totally right about that. They've ruined it. It's time to get new blood in there. Totally agree with you, Leah. Thank you so much for the call. Appreciate it. Let's go to Dave and Whittier. Dave, hello. You know, uh, hey, Randy, folks, he's just like he and Kamala Harris. This is what he's doing. It's all a scam. He's trying. He's for Prop 47. He doesn't want to remove it. He never talks against Prop 47. The real he's like. He's like he and Kamala Harris are like these people who call you these scam phone callers and pretend they're Microsoft and they ask you, "Can you go turn on your computer and let us get in and we'll do something for you?" Uh, it's all a scam. He's trying to avoid the real issue, and that is is that he this is all intentional. This is all a a technique he's trying to do to avoid uh, Prop Forty Seven's effect that it's causing the homeless to be on the street and the high crime. What Prop 36 will do, it will remedy that. It will re- return a judge's ability to say to a drug offender in court, you either go to rehab or go to jail. Prop 47 took that away. Gavin, uh, Gascon co-wrote that. This is what he's trying to avoid. It's all a blame game. It's a false, fake blame game. And that's all it is, people. He's a scammer. He's a liar. He's, he's nothing but corruption. So, folks, vote for Prop 36. You are totally right about that. And uh, good on you for being as educated as to what Prop 36 will do. It does a few other things as well. But yes, on your third misdemeanor for drug possession, you get a treatment mandated felony if 36 passes. And Gavin's like, well, where's all the treatment beds going to go? And like, that's where the money should be spent. Why are we not spending it on that? What are we spending the money on? He's such a liar. He's such a scammer. He's a piece of garbage. (laughs) <laughs> Thanks so much for the call, Dave. Appreciate it. Let's go to Morris in downtown L.A. Morris, hello. Yeah, good afternoon. Yeah, uh, gruesome is showboating. He's got a get. He wants to run for a higher office, and he's putting on his show. He's never done anything with the state of California except waste the tax money. Uh, when we had a, a, a movement to redo the uh, gas tax, that failed. We had a recall on gruesome, that failed. And it's, I don't know why why the stupid thing, people vote this way. I mean, the money is wasted. He, all he's doing is showboating now. All right? And we've had the homeless for many, many years. Why is he coming on now all of a sudden? After all because this years. is a and year, and this is a year, Morris, where California is going to get a lot of extra attention based on who's running for president. And Gavin's got to make California look good, make us look like we know what we're doing. For his own ambitions as well. Thanks so much for the call. Bill and La Cunada. Bill, hello. Hey, Randy, uh, you, you were wondering, uh, or the people were wondering why he didn't attack uh, Karen Bass. Look, she's got a master's in homelessness from USC, and we're still wondering, like, how, did, how exactly did that occur when she got this, quote, scholarship that sure looked like a bribe, you know, the kind that sent Mark Ridley Thomas to prison. But Gavin knows that she's an expert, you know, because she's the mistress of homelessness. So I think that academically, he's outranked by her. But as somebody uh, earlier pointed out, Prop 47 and 57 
are what's propelling the homelessness because as a veteran of the 70s, 80s, and 90s, I can tell you none of this existed because we put drug users in jail for long terms and we arrested people for loitering in parks and streets. And voila, we never had this problem until Prop 47 and 57 exploded it and started inviting all sorts of, of miscreants from all over this, the world, actually, and not just other states, to California. So this guy, you know, the, the guy who called him a liar is, is putting it mildly. This guy is a snake from hell talking like this oh my bill thank you so much for the call appreciate it we can reverse a lot of things in 47 with 36 coming this november we get gascon out and hockman in those are just a few of the steps and honestly if the electorate sees that if the electorate shows that that's what the state wants so many politicians gavin himself are so fickle they're not ideologues on these issues they go with what they think is popular and if what they think is popular is getting rid of the damn encampments they'll work a little harder to get rid of the damn encampments now i'm talking like gavin it's the news blitz with randy wang on kabc it's the news blitz with randy wang on talk radio 790 kabc we're going through gavin newsom getting all pissed off while cleaning up a homeless encampment in the san fernando valley but for a second why don't we think of happier things 790 kabc welcomes mariah carey it's mariah carey's christmas time at the hollywood bowl on november 8th Tickets are on sale Friday at Ticketmaster.com, but right now, call in number 9 at one 888 Gets a pair of tickets to the show. Tickets furnished by Lab Nation. Good luck dialing. When we come back, we'll hear what Gavin Newsom has to say about criminalizing the homeless on the News Blitz with Randy Wang on KABC. It's the News Blitz with Randy Wang on KABC. Let's get back to Gavin Newsom cleaning up a homeless encampment and getting all pissed off in the San Fernando Valley. Now... We're not going to be able to get to all this sound, but guess what? We're going to pick this right back up at noon on the John Phillips show tomorrow because uh, I was texting Johnny when I was listening to this thing. And when we love something, when we're like, okay, this is what we got to do. We say a block. This is a block tomorrow at noon. So make sure you tune in for that. Let's get back to Gavin as he gets asked, what about criminalizing the homeless? Why do you want to do that? Why? Why? How is it criminalization? How is it? What is it? But no, no, I, 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 no, but I'm, I'm offering this. No, I guess, I guess I'm asking you to ask them because no, no. And here's what I mean by that. Well, they don't do interviews ever because no, no. And here's what I mean by that. Cause I actually, unless Janice is on the bus because no, no. And here's what I mean by that. Cause I actually reached out to a couple supervisors and said, D- did you read the EO? I honestly, I said, did you read it? And I got back two responses that said, we're doing a lot of good work. I said, no, no. Did you read the EO? Okay. Hilda responded to him. Janice responded to him. I don't think Holly's opened the email yet. I don't think he knows Barger. He definitely doesn't know who Lindsey Horvath is. I said, what? But let me finish. Because it goes to your question, which was a great question. I love the question. Thank you. I said, anytime any politician says I love the question, did not love the question. I said, what about the executive orders about criminalization? It actually lays out a strategy that specifically says we've got to provide services and supports and then it attaches an understanding of the money the state has provided specifically for those services and supports including yeah they already spent that money on the things that don't work zoning reforms including conservatorship reforms including strategies so you don't have to conserve called care court including more flexibility with money that used to be only for mental health. If what Gavin's alleging here is true, that's a huge story that no one's paying enough attention to, that L.A. County has completely ignored what was supposed to be in care court. That was bipartisan passed by the legislature, I think unanimously, that, hey, if somebody's struggling with drugs and they can't make the decision for themselves, a family member or even a police officer can say this person needs to get mandated treatment. If L.A. County's not standing that up, then the L.A. County Board of Supervisors need to go bye-bye. Including more flexibility with money that used to be only for mental health, but not substance abuse and mental health. Including mobile reimbursements for Medi-Cal under our Medi-Cal mobile services, which provide $1.4 billion of reimbursement. I mean, you name it, they now have it. And then the excuse, well, well, it was Grant's Pass. Well... Actually, it was Grant's pass, but hey, we all slip every once in a while. And then the excuse, well, well, it was Grant's pass. Well, that's passed. 
So now we want to see results. No one wants to see criminalization. That's a lazy, lazy framework. And that's the binary people that don't want to do the job are going to try to frame. And I reject that. I would like to see criminalization for the actual criminals that are in those encampments. Some of them are not. Some of them are just struggling. Some of them have actual mental health problems. And it is hellish that we are not giving those people the help that they cannot get for themselves. But there is actual criminal activity organizing in a lot of those encampments. What did we just find out with the big bust of the copper wire ring with the 6th Street Bridge from the LAPD task force? A lot of people in those RVs were the ones stealing all the copper wire. So maybe we should criminalize some of this. You know, up in San Francisco, they're finding lots of warrants. They're finding people that have committed hundreds of burglaries. So... There you go. We'll get to more of this sound tomorrow in the John Phillips show, but that's just a little taste of Gavin all the way pissed off, screaming at the board of supervisors to do their damn job or he's going to take away all the money. Thank you all so much for tuning into this show. It is a pleasure to do it every single day. Tomorrow is going to be one of our Happy Hour Friday shows. I'm excited about that. That's where we take things a little easier because we're getting into the weekend. If you miss any of our shows, you can go to kabc.com slash newsblitz, kabc.com slash newsblitz, kabc.com slash newsblitz. And you should be able to find the newsblitz with Randy Wang anywhere you find podcasts. If you don't see it somewhere where you find podcasts, email me at randykabc at gmail.com and I'll forward that to management. Thank you all so much. We'll see you tomorrow at five for another newsblitz with Randy Wang on KABC.